All right, let's have a discussion about Laplace domain control versus time domain control. This video is about modeling and I would like to talk about Laplace domain versus time domain. All right, so let's have an example. Spring mass damper system, right? One of the famous examples. This is spring with constant alpha, damping uh, damper with constant beta, mass of the cart, no friction I'm assuming here. Here is the control signal in forces and I am measuring, measuring output Y, which is the position of the cart. Now, once you have a system like this, you control a free body diagram. On the free body diagram, basically, there are certain forces acting to this mass. One of them is the control force on this direction aligned with the positive position. And there are two counter forces acting on the opposite sides. Now, thanks to Newton's second law, m multiplied by acceleration, y dot dot is the acceleration, is the summation of the forces. Um, negative force coming from alpha y uh, from the spring, beta multiplied the velocity of the cart, and the positive force is the force that is control force applied to this system. All right, so we can arrange things we can uh, multiply both sides with 1 over m. We can write the same uh, ordinary differential equation like this. And for the uh, sake of brevity, I am going to say that alpha over m is a, beta over m is b, 1 over m is c. All right, so this captures equations of motion of this card, right? So in, other, in, a, in, in some sense, how control uh, inputs that we apply to the system dynamically affect the both position of the cart. This is what we capture by the equations of motion. All right, in Laplace domain, we use transfer functions. So basically, if you take the Laplace transformation of this ordinary differential equation, and remembering that uh, it is subject to zero initial conditions by the defi definition of transfer function, we assume zero initial conditions. And remembering that y dot dot transforms to Laplace domain as s to the power of 2 multiplied by y, s is the Laplace variable, and likewise y dot transforms like s multiplied by y, we can directly write instead of this s to the power of 2y minus a y minus b s y and c u. And then basically we need to arrange things for the transfer function outputs divided by the inputs by definition. So when we arrange things, we have basically C divided by S to the power of 2 plus B S plus C. Here is our transfer function on the Laplace domain. And then for different systems, this will be my first important remark, for different systems, you are going to have different transfer functions, right? You may have zeros, you may have more poles, and based on these specific transfer functions, we develop specific controllers. In other words, for, for different sets of transfer functions, we have different sets of controllers. And this is kind of what we do. For every transfer function, we design a different controller most of the time. Let's keep this in mind. I'm going to um, uh, discuss this to make, um, to highlight the importance of time domain versus Laplace domain later in the video. All right, so this was the Laplace side. Now, we can take, I am rewriting these equations of motion here. Now, I would like to formulate things in time domain. Let's model these equations of motion in time domain. For this purpose, we define state variables. Let's say x1 is the position, x2 is the velocity, y dot. Now, I would like to write things in the state space form. For this purpose, let me write first, differentiate x1 dot. x1 dot will be basically y dot, and y dot is nothing but x2. All right, let's differentiate x2, x2 dot equals to y dot dot. What is y dot dot? Here it is, basically this part, minus a y minus b y dot plus c u. Well, we already called y as x1, so I am going to replace this y with x1, y dot with x2, and u is u. And the final step, I am going to define the state vector. Okay, x is x1 and x2, there is a 2 by 1 vector. And then once you differentiate x dot, you have x dot 
first column is x1 dot, right? x1 dot, x2 dot. So 0, 1, x1, and x2. So basically, x1 dot equals to x2. This is what it tells. So in order to view this more properly, you may want to write this if you are doing this for the first time. Let's write things like x1 dot, x2 dot, here x1, x2, and here x1, x2. Let's write like this. All right, so basically uh, this matrix vector form helps us to write things in a more compact way. So x1 that equals to 0 multiplied by x1, 1 multiplied by x2, so x1 that equals to x2 here and nothing else and x2 dot is nothing but minus a x1 minus a x1 minus b x2 minus b x2 plus c u so we write things in a more compact way but where is our output our output is the first state variable x1 so basically if you y is 1 0 c matrix multiplied by x1 x2 so 1 multiplied by x1 0 multiplied by x2 we have x1 as the output all right, so we have this x dot equals to a x plus b u structure, and output is basically c ma matrix c multiplied by x. All right, couple of remarks. In this case, our order is two. The order of this um, equation of motion or the ordinary differential equation is second order. So we need to define two states. If this is third order, we also need to define x3 equals to y dot dot and include it to our state vector. It goes like this. So to make the long story short, this is our state space representation. Now, I would like to make a remark. This is a first order looking um, form, right? x dot equals to ax plus bu, y equals to cx. Of course, it rep represents a higher order system, but eventual product basically is a first order looking form. So in other words, for different systems, as long as they are linear, I will mention about nonlinear systems in a different video, how we model them, equilibrium points, so on and so forth. Uh, basically, for every system, I can write it in ABC form, and ABC matrices can have different structures, different size, but if we know how to control a X plus BU type of systems, then I know how to control every system. So from this standpoint, you know, if you remember my discussion a couple seconds ago, in Laplace domain, we have different structures and different controllers. But for time domain, if we do modeling in the time domain and obtain state space representations, and if I teach you how to control every x that equals to a x plus b u form with the same controller, we are going to have, if you look at in my, in my channel, state feedback versus output feedback control methods, we have certain sets of control uh, structures for linear systems, but we only have four structures, two for you know, state feedback, feedback feed forward approach, integral approach, and output feedback, we have the same versions for command following. If you are doing stabilization, we drop the command terms, but we kind of have a, you know, very structured control designs for x that equals to ax plus bu forms. This brings us to the following comment. Inste in 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 instead of controlling every transfer function with a different controller, we can control x that equals to ax plus bu, y equals to cx form with the same structure of controllers. And hence, from this regard, on time domain, when you use state space uh, representations, it is easier to control a larger class of linear systems. That's my first comment. This is the first bullet here. And on the second bullet, on time domain, it is easy to handle multiple inputs and multiple outputs. For this example, we only have one output, one input, okay? Because in the final part of the video, I am going to show that you know, Laplace domain formulations and the time domain formulations are equivalent to each other because we represent the same system. They cannot be different. So, um, but basically, yes, Laplace domain can also handle multiple inputs, multiple outputs, but it is much harder based on experience. But here, 
when you have multiple inputs, multiple outputs, and I, am, I, I can do a videos about that. Let me know, leave a comment about this. We are still for multiple inputs, multiple output case. We are going to preserve the same structure, a x plus x that equals a x plus b u y equals c x type of a structure. And although this is a topic for another video, um, on time domain with space, state space representations, we can also handle nonlinear systems, not necessarily linear systems, which something we cannot do with Laplace domain approach. Okay, so um, because you know in the past I got this uh, this question from my students as well as from the comments to my videos, why we are doing time domain versus Laplace domain. I mean, these are the three bullets. Basically, personally, in my research, I've, you know, um, supported by many agencies, I prefer state space formulations. I am not saying time, you know, frequency domain. I'm not saying Laplace domain formulations are bad. They are good. There are some certain hacks. It is easier to handle um, in Laplace domain. But if you look at the big picture, because of these three important bullets, time domain, is much stronger as compared to Laplace domain and this is my personal opinion. All right, and so in the final part of this uh, short video, I would like to show that uh, this representation, we can basically, uh, we can obtain this transfer function from these representations because at the end we are representing the same system. First of all, how do you go from Laplace domain to time domain? Basically, you have this transfer function. From this transfer function, obtain it, obtain this equation. From here, obtain the equations of motion, and then define state variables. Then you have basically time domain state space formalization. Basically, this is how you go from Laplace to time domain. Now, how you go from time domain to Laplace domain? It is an, there is an easier way. So we have x that equals to ax plus bu. I am transforming this time domain ordinary differential equation, first order uh, differential equation, like this, s, s for x dot, x plus ax plus bu. Right now I am on the Laplace domain. So I am sending this term to left side. So we have s identity. I need to put identity here because we deal with matrices. S is a scalar, so that this dimension and this dimension is compatible. Multiplied by x equals to bu. Now x, we multiply uh, with si minus a inverse, both sides, left sides of this part and this part. So we obtain x equals to si minus a inverse bu. But at that, we care about y. So y is cx. So I multiply c with this x here to see more clearly this is our x right coming from this equation so we obtain basically this equation similar in fashion y divided by u to obtain transfer functions when we divide y with u we end up having this term c si minus a inverse b so this is indeed our transfer function and this transfer function for this system or any other linear system that you consider is equivalent to its transfer function here for that particular system. Let's, let me prove this to you. Okay, C is this. I am just putting the C matrix here. SI minus A inverse, I directly take its inverse, it is here, multiplied by B. B is zero, small c. Don't mix this small c with this big C here that I use for a different notation. And if you do this multiplication, you have from this equals to C divided by S to the power of 2 BS plus A, no different than this transfer function. So um, I tried to cover basics in a dense way. And if you want me to expand some of the topics, let me know once again. You can go from Laplace domain to time domain by starting from your transfer function, go to the time domain, follow the steps that I highlight here, then you can go from Laplace to time domain. From di time domain to Laplace domain, you can directly use this, basically take Laplace transformation and obtain uh, basically this transfer function. 
and put your matrices here, take the inversion, you are going to have transfer functions. So from that regard, once again, transfer functions and state space representations or time domain formula formulations are equivalent to each other because once again, they represent the same system. However, because of these three advantages, it is better, in my opinion, based on my experience, to control systems in time domain. All right, take care.